Hi everyone, and welcome to the first video of my 2022 Crossing Newfoundland by ATV video series. If you're new to the channel, my friends and I cross the province of Newfoundland, Canada on our ATVs and side-by-sides every year. This year we traveled over 1,300 kilometers in eight days and saw some of the most beautiful scenery anywhere in the world. I call it the ATV trip of a lifetime, and thousands of people that have duplicated our journeys over the years by using these videos and my website as their guide agree with me. One of the most unique aspects of this trip is taking a ferry from Nova Scotia to Newfoundland. You leave your trucks and trailers behind, drive your ATV or side-by-side -side right onto the ferry, and your off-road vehicle is the only thing you use to get around Newfoundland for the entire trip. Sometimes we cross the entire island and sometimes we just do the west coast. Sometimes we stay in hotels and sometimes we camp. In September of 2022, we did the entire island, starting in Argentia on the east coast, and we stayed in motels and cabins for the entire trip. We went to Clarenville, Trinity, Gander, Badger, Deer Lake, the city of Cornerbrook, Robinsons, in Port Basque, where we took the ferry back to Nova Scotia. We also did an amazing trip to the Gas Bay region of Quebec this year in June, and I'll be doing a series of videos on that trip as well. If you like long haul ATV trips and beautiful scenery, then you'll absolutely love the Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip. Go to my website, crossingnewfoundlandbyatv.com, to learn how you and your friends and family can do this trip too. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the like button on this video. It helps YouTube direct more of this type of content directly to you. This is day one, the day we drive all the way to the ferry terminal in North Sydney to get on to the Marine Atlantic ferry that takes us to Newfoundland. It's about a three and a half hour journey for me, so I had to make sure the machine is strapped down nice and tight. I met up with Bill and Howie at a McDonald's not far from where I live before we uh, decided to travel together on the highway to the ferry terminal. Regular viewers of my channel will definitely recognize this area. This is the A&L parking lot across the street from the Marine Atlantic Ferry Terminal. You park your trucks and trailers here, you offload your machines, you drive a short distance to the ferry terminal, and Bob's your uncle. It was only about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and the ferry doesn't leave till about 5.30 so we had lots of time to get ready to go across to the ferry terminal. Uh, we had several new people this year so we took a few minutes for everyone to kind of get acquainted with one another. I gotta say, I really like those Maverick X3 Turbo RRs like this one here. Buffalo Bill has his machine totally geared up with all the stuff you'd need for overlanding. Just look at the amount of gear he has. I'm pretty sure that Wynn's new uh, Turbo RR there was basically brand new and uh, he's got a lot of nice options on it. Extra lights, the windshield, the wiper and the sprayer. The BF Goodrich tires, the mud flaps, the rock sliders, the, the fenders, the new steering wheel. And this is Evans RMAX 1000. It's pretty new. Uh, it's a beautiful machine. It's got a lot of really nice options on it as well, as you can see here. And this is Greg's Suzuki King Quad 750. You're going to see that thing go through some serious rocks later in this trip. And this is Bob. I'm pretty sure this is his ninth trip across the island. We decided to get going and head over towards the ferry terminal so that we could go check in and get in line. There's Grant and his 1000 XTP Commander. That's a wicked machine. More on that later. Once we get situated, we found out that the ferry was delayed like six hours. So we had lots of time to kill before we were going to get on the boat. Um, you can leave the ferry yard as long as you keep your tickets with you. So we decided to get out and walk around and explore the area. Bob and I found a little pub called The Cellar that's literally about 200 meters away from the ferry terminal. It was a great little spot. I'd highly recommend it if you go to do this trip and you have a few hours to kill and you just walk over there. While we were in the pub, our ferry arrived, but it was still going to be hours before we could board it because they had to clean it and get it ready for new passengers. Grant has that machine set up really nice with a lot of uh, Can-Am Link options for storage. And this is Hal, Evan, Grant, and Rob. This is their first trip with me, so they're not used to ignoring the camera in their face. It's going to be a good trip. Oh, yeah. 
we finally got the okay to get on the boat and we are pretty excited but at the same time we're tired because we were late getting on the boat but uh, we were kind of worried now because we weren't supposed to get into Newfoundland until 10 o'clock the next morning this is going to put us behind about six hours or more um, and we have a long day our first day in Newfoundland so more on that later as well this was the very first time we went all the way to the bottom of the boat I've never come down this far before <laughs> That nice couple was from New Brunswick and they were also crossing Newfoundland and they're side by side with friends of theirs using my website information. Because the boat didn't leave until after midnight, the restaurant was closed, but at least the bar was still serving food. I got up just before sunrise, so I decided to go up on the deck and take some video because the restaurants weren't open yet. This is the 10th floor. I'm going down to the 7th where the restaurants are in the public seating area. If you're on the overnight boat like this, get a room or you're going to sleep on these chairs with people that snore like chainsaws. That was actually somebody snoring that I just walked by. I think he was the only one who managed to get any sleep on this side of the room. At least I was able to get a coffee at this canteen and wait for the restaurant to open so I could get the buffet breakfast. Evan and Hal are father and son and so are Grant and Rob. It was great that they were able to spend so much time together on this trip. That's a nice new rig there, Dale, you're driving. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Maiden voyage. Maiden voyage. The first time on the boat. So be a little dustier on your way back. Oh, okay. right, yeah. well, we finally arrived in Newfoundland and it's time for us to get off the boat. It was about quarter after four. Uh, we're only about uh, six and a half hours behind schedule. But you know what? It's not that big a deal. We all have headlights and LED light bars. So, I mean, driving at night's not a big deal. I know there's a lot of big animals in Newfoundland. So we're just going to take our time and be safe. And I just want to say thank you to Marine Atlantic for trying to get that boat there fast as they could. I know they were driving it faster than they normally do. And uh, the, the staff on the boat was extremely friendly and helpful. Patrick, you should have seen the little golden doodle you could have had. Oh, a rescue? Oh, sweet. Sweet Caroline. A rescue doggy? No, but he gets paid to pick That's him up on the mainland and bring him back. Oh, he, he drives fish truck. Old commander. New commander. Regular viewers know that I've had that commander a long time and put a lot of miles on it. And when I first saw these new commanders come out, I wasn't sure if I was going to like them or not. But now that I've been able to put some time behind the wheel of one like this, and I, I'll show you that later, and I've seen them in person a lot, I really like them. It's like a pond. I can't. I can't. Good driving off there, Dale. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Drives like a dream. Does it? Those of you familiar with my Newfoundland videos from years previous know that the first 30 kilometers on the east side here outside of uh, Argentia are the worst going. It's just that it's slow. I mean, it's kind of rough like this, but I mean, it's not really that hard to get through at all. But it just does slow you down a little bit. And even though we didn't have much sunlight left, we still took the time to stop at a few beautiful spots for some pictures. Isn't that beautiful? Usually when we get here, it's lunchtime, but now it's after supper. And the nice thing about being here this late is we get to see this beautiful sunset. One of the benefits of doing these videos every year is that I get to go through all these nice clips. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't probably spend nearly as much time ever having the chance to look at them again. And I've done this trip several times and every time I go, I always enjoy it. And I'm glad to know that so many people have done this trip also because my videos have motivated them to do so. If you want to plan a trip like this for you and your friends or your family, go to my website. I have everything you need to know there. And I actually have examples of several different trips laid out day by day. We didn't stop much after this because once the sun went down there wasn't much to see anyways and if we took as much time as we normally do to do this section of the trip that would put us in at one o'clock in the morning and we didn't want to be that late. Wow, it's hard 
hard to see like when the sun's in their eyes and all that dust. It was definitely a nice break when the sun went below the horizon. A lot of the videos and pictures I took are just with my cell phone. I can't believe the quality of the night pictures that these newer model cell phones take. That picture there was in night mode, and the next one was just without night mode, but it still came out great. We made it! <laughs> 925. 925, look at that. That's definitely the fastest we've ever done that run. Right in between the two times I thought we'd make it. <laughs> between 9 and 10. Your taillights aren't on, eh? They were? The no, they weren't on. They weren't? For the, like all night. Oh. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're on now. Are they off now? Yep. I think uh, when I was putting the light bar on, I was turning the lights off. Yeah. Oh. Just so it wasn't drawn that much, but oh, I'll leave them on the gotcha. low beam so they stay on. I was on low beam pretty much the whole way. Once we got settled in for the night, we ordered some pizza, and this is the only picture I took that night. One thing we did new this year that we haven't done other years is that we traveled all the way from Clarenville to Trinity. We wanted to see an abandoned amusement park there. There's an interesting story about that park and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to read about it. After stopping at the amusement park, we drove to the incredibly picturesque town of Trinity before we circled back to Clarenville. Special thanks to Buffalo Bill for making this trip to Trinity happen. In fact, he organized the entire trip this year and I'll explain more about that later. Before we left that morning, we were talking to a group of people from New Brunswick that were also doing the Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip. They were using my website and my videos as their guide to plan their trip across the island. One of the nice things about going to Trinity and back is that we were coming back to this hotel again for the night and we didn't have to pack all of our gear back in the machines. We're just outside of Clarenville. Actually, I think we're still in Clarenville, heading to uh, Trinity. And uh, this section of the trail right here is really nice, running right along the water. It was certainly nice to be driving in the daytime again, and uh, you may have noticed how much dust is inside my machine. It was really dry in Newfoundland for the few weeks before we got there this year, so it was really, really dusty. You'll see a lot of it in the upcoming videos. This is actually the abandoned amusement park now, and these buildings that I'm going by here, people used to rent those and stay in them, and they would come up here and stay at the park for days at a time. Apparently this old ferris wheel that's lying on the ground now was still standing up until only just a year or two ago. Well the vandals certainly did their work in here. That old rail bed over there, went around the whole park. And the views. I think it would have been quite something to see this back in the day when it was open. Leave a comment below if you used to come here when this was open and tell people what it was like. While I was walking around getting some video, Buffalo Bill was busy barbecuing up some hamburgers for everyone for lunch. These trips are so much fun. If it's on your bucket list, make sure 2023 is your year. After lunch we decided we were going to drive right into Trinity and check out the little town. There's a road that runs into the park that's still there. It's actually in good shape considering that no one's used it in so many years. Uh, you have to drive about two kilometers on paved road to get there. 
just make sure you look out for other cars and stuff like that. Luckily, there wasn't much traffic, and the ride in was quite scenic. We stopped on this road and we walked down to a pier that was at the end of it and we did the touristy thing, took lots of pictures. Actually, we fit right in. There was tons of tourists around considering how out of the way this little town is. We explored the town for a little while and there was a, a lot of European tourists around who were very fascinated by our machines and very friendly and uh, asked us a lot of questions. It was getting late so we decided to double back towards the amusement park and get on the old rail bed and go back towards Clarenville. Like I mentioned before and in previous videos, one thing you have to watch out for in Newfoundland is trail dust. That's one of the main reasons I switched from an open face helmet to a closed face helmet. And on days like this, it wouldn't hurt to have some kind of a bandana or a, a respirator or a mask with you. We made it back to the hotel around 6.30. And in case you're wondering what happened to my windshield, I didn't take it off. This is a video from a few years ago because I forgot to take video as we showed up to the hotel. So might as well use one I took before. Bella's restaurant has really good food and it's right at the hotel, which is very convenient. The trip to Trinity and back took us about 200 kilometers or so, which is roughly 125 miles. And uh, it was about nine and a half hours altogether. That was including our stops and everything. And it was a lot of fun. I would uh, recommend it to anybody who wants to go out and see that abandoned amusement park and the town of Trinity. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we did Gas Bay, Quebec in June. We traveled over seven days and 1600 kilometers. It was a fantastic trip. We went from Amqui, Pointe de la Croix, New Carlisle, Perse, Murdochville, Mont Saint Pierre, Cap Chat, and then back to Amqui. And because of that, I wasn't sure if I could get two weeks off to do a Newfoundland trip later in the year. So I didn't plan for one, but Bill did. He's retired, he has more time off, and he invited me along. So thanks so much, Bill, for planning this awesome Newfoundland trip because not only was I able to go, Evan, Hal, Grant, Rob, and Greg were also able to come along with us. And he cooked lunch for us every day on the trail. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out on YouTube. Here's something you'll see in the coming episodes.